Welcome and thank you for joining us on the fifth stop of the Ideal Standard Together World Tour. We're inviting you to explore Dubai with us, a city that symbolizes transformation, progress and a bright future. It is a place where history is still visible, but which has become famous through its fast evolution of urban developments, architecture of superlatives and iconic hubs of culture. After our first stop in the historic Al-Fahidi district, more commonly known as El Bastakia, we will take you to the Dubai Opera House. Later, we will stop over at the Dubai Municipality and the Building Systems Development Unit to learn more about their latest innovative initiative, the Dubai 3D Printing Strategy. Last but not least, being in Dubai, we could not miss the Expo. From the Belgian Pavilion, where we present our latest Ideal Standard products and other exciting structures, we are able to offer you a first look at this unique exhibition. I would now like to hand over to Marina, our presenter of the day, with a true passion for construction, architecture and interior design. Over to you, Marina. Hello everyone, my name is Marina Mergin. I'm a founder and strategic director here at Intellier, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the Ideal Standard Together World Tour here in Dubai, the city of future. Now, allow me to introduce you to Ahmed Hafez, CEO of Ideal Standard Middle East and Africa, who will start today's tour here in the historical district of Dubai that is so rich in heritage, the Al Fahidi district. Thank you, Marina. I'm happy to be with you today in Dubai. In fact, we chose Dubai ضمن جولة الشركة حول العالم لأن دبي وأيديال ستاندرد بيتبعوا نفس الفكر والرؤية في التصميم والإلهام من التراث مع التخطيط للمستقبل والحرص على الإبداع متأثرين بالثقافات والتراث معتمدين على الأفكار الحديثة منطلقين للابتكار والتكنولوجيا المتطورة هنشوف مع بعض إزاي دبي مدينة الإبداع وأيديال ستاندرد العالمية اتأثروا بالثقافات والتراث المحيط بيهم وبالتالي ظهر هذا التأثير في تصميم بناء المدينة وكمان في تطوير تصميم منتجات Ideal Standard الابتكار هو عامل مهم جدا في رؤية Ideal Standard أفكارنا الحديثة موجودة في خططنا المستقبلية وتطورنا المستمر تماما زي مدينة دبي في تطورها وتميزها وهنتعرف على قصة نجاح دبي إزاي أبهرت العالم بنهضتها من وسط الصحراء إزاي أصبحت وجهة لمختلف الثقافات هنزور بعض الأماكن الملهمة والرائعة في دبي من ضمنها أهم معرض في العالم إكسبو 2020 وهيكون معانا نخبة من أهم المصممين والمهندسين المعماريين في العالم وهيقدموا لنا أحدث الابتكارات في مجال التصميم Dubai's architectural landscape is respectful of its past, not just so that modern design can stand as monuments, but because there has been so much to learn from it. This is depicted in buildings like the Burj Al Arab, which is designed with a unique sail-shaped facade, and the Palm Jumeirah Islands, which were built entirely from sand and rocks, and designed to look like a palm tree stretching out from the mainland. It was built in accordance with the order from the ruler of Dubai, who came up with the idea. The order also included the construction of the famous Burj Khalifa, whose design is derived from Islamic architecture, like the Great Mosque of Samarra. So, our first stop is at the Al Fahidi district, more commonly known as Al Bastakia. We're in the heart of the oldest standing residential area of Dubai. This is where a flurry of textile and pearl trade took place back in the 19th century. Innovating design is in the DNA of even the oldest parts of the city. And I'm joined today by multi-award winning architect Joe Tabet to tell us more. So, we're in the old part of Dubai. How did we end up with so many futuristic buildings? The word Bastakiya itself, it's for everybody that comes to Dubai and you need to explain to them about Dubai and the old Dubai, you tell them go to the Bastakiya. 
that's where everything started and where the narrow streets that they started in order to protect themselves from the windstorm and to create more shades and the innovation that started with the wind towers, it's all started in here from the tent and then the Bastakia started and then you have the future of Dubai. So everything started to go big, 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 big. And you can see from a retail perspective, for example, you start having big malls, big retail outlets. So things always, you go back to it, things will change. There is always a flexibility, depends on the era where you're in. 20 years ago or 30 years ago, Dubai needed a message to the world. So they had to brand themselves accordingly. Now they are on the top of the world so they can go back to their roots and use the roots in order to develop all the innovation and move to the future. How do you convey this message about design and innovation by looking back at heritage to younger designers who work with you as well? My only concern is the future architect. It's changing on a daily basis. The techniques that we're using is changing. So by, uh, we, we're very involved with universities and uh, giving talks and discussion with students and telling them that always go back to the roots. We just need to be careful how we use the word sustainable. Having more curtain and glass, that means having more air conditioning, that means using more energy, you're not gonna be sustainable. Think about what the, the sun di direction will give you is exactly where we are now. We are between two narrow walls and there is a unit here and another apartment there and you don't feel it. This creating kind of a wind corridor. So these things can be used and this is where we help them look back. You really need to think about it. You have a narrow street, you have six meter tall high. Imagine you have a 300 meter tall high. What's gonna happen in this corridor? So we need to understand the nature. Nature and architecture, they are here to complete each other's and not to compete. Joe, so today here we are honoring the heritage, but what's ahead of us? What's the future of Dubai? We will be flying soon. I keep saying it in all my talks and conferences. When we watched the Fifth Element uh, movie with Bruce Willis and we saw the flying cars, and two years ago we saw RTA, they tested the first flying taxi and stuff like that. So we really need to be careful and ready with the technology that's coming, how it's going to be used. We really need to use it for the best, not for the worst. As part of our exploration tour of how heritage impacts Dubai's design landscape as well as the future of the city, I will be joined today by an award-winning architect and designer, Janos Rostock. So, so Dubai Opera, of course, we wanted to have a building which is rooted in its location. Um, so, so we looked to history, we looked to how Dubai all started, and that was on the creek uh, with the Abras uh, and, the, the, and, the, the, and the Dows. And, and Dubai Opera is really a, a, a representation of, of that maritime history. So, so what's interesting about Dubai Opera, of course, is that it's a fairly low-rise building in an otherwise very high-rise environment. Um, and that was on purpose. Uh, it creates a space around it uh, and above it, uh, in between all the other buildings. Uh, so a building that invites you in. Um, we've looked at the glass, for example. The glass is, is coated uh, with anti-reflexive uh, coating on both sides, so that at night, like today, looking out, you will only see what's outside, not your own reflection. But today we're in the lobby area. Well, so what yeah. can you tell us a bit more about so, that? So, so the lobby itself uh, is an important part of this building. Uh, what we did was that we have a 360 degree lobby, which means that no matter where you come from, uh, you're coming to the front of house. Um, the other important point, or important point, sorry, is that um, we wanted the, the building to be part of the neighborhood and give life to the neighborhood. Um, so they become the performers of the neighborhood, like, uh, like the, the performers down on stage. So in a way the building is as well, is active performance on its own? It's active performance. Um, and, and we get to see this see, magnificent show. As well. The 
impact of culture and heritage is important to Ideal Standard too. It drives the company to shaping the future. We can look back on the brand's proud history. Architect Roberto Palomba, Chief Design Officer at Ideal Standard, is with me today. Ciao, Roberto, and welcome to Dubai. Thank you, Marina. So we're standing in front of your latest Conca collection. Um, as I understood, this collection is inspired by some of previous uh, designs from Ideal Center from back in 1970s. Can you tell me a bit more about what inspired your collection? Which products inspired this collection? Uh, all the collection is inspired to the Conca that was designed by Paolo Tilke. And uh, it was a great design for that period because it was taking the ceramic uh, to a next level of uh, shape and function and also aesthetic. And uh, for me it was very important reinventing the role of a new leadership of a standard in design to be conscious of our great roots we had in the past and bring these roots to be our heritage for our future production. In, uh, in the specific of this, this uh, collection, we try to keep this idea of, uh, how can I say, organic, mm -hmm. uh, soft, uh, the relationship with the water. This product seems to be sculpted by the water and the name Conca means exactly this, a place that is made by the water and a place where it gives this idea of uh, soft and natural. That was the, what I want to bring for the new generation product, but keeping, let me say, a bridge between the past and the future. This product also, Conca Collection, also won uh, recently a Red Dot Award and IF Award as well. Tell me a little bit more about what did the judges saw in this product? What was the reasoning for awarding you with this award? For me, the most important award is given by the people that are going to use it. Mm -hmm. We do our product for the people that they are going to use in their home every day. The everyday life is the best uh, award that we can receive as a brand. And when we talk about the technological innovations, what can you tell me about uh, Conca Collection in that, those terms? Uh, the original Conca, the design by Paolo Tilke in the 70s, was a, uh, a product very thick, because at that time we couldn't uh, work the ceramic in the way that we are working today. Mm -hmm. So um, for us it was very important to use the new technologies in order to reduce the, the quantity of raw material that we use in our uh, production. You have to think that the less material we use, the less energy we use, the less water we use to produce. And this is very important also in an environmental way to keep this, uh, let me say, environmental friendly attitude also in product for every day. Thank you. 
We've seen how modern architecture and design has been inspired by heritage here in Dubai. But the city's multicultural landscape has meant that its design and areas of self-expression have become diverse in so many ways. That attitude has birthed so many incredible projects and landmarks around the city, which are the culmination of culture and modernism coming together. Like the Museum of the Future, inscribed with Arabic calligraphy, the Opus building which conveys the remarkably innovative quality of Zaha Hadid's work, and Dubai Deep Dive, a building which is housed inside an oyster-shaped structure, a nod to the UAE's history as a pearl diving nation. And now we have come to the Etihad Museum, a contemporary building where visitors can explore UAE-rich history. It's the location where the Founding Fathers signed the declaration that marked the formation of the United Arab Emirates back in 1971. So the concept of this building also resonates well with the ideal standard design team, who also believes that you have to push creativity to the limits in order to develop products that revolutionize spaces, but also stand the test of time. So we're in this beautiful building designed by Moriyama and Tashima architects. What can you tell us about this amazing building? It's got its double curved, it's got lots of glass, and, and it's really very emotive in terms of, of what it does. It's, it's, a, it's inspired by the parchment that was used for, for signing uh, originally, um, and it's sitting as a, as a composition where you've got the existing Union House, mm -hmm. you've got this which marks the entrance, and then you've got an underground uh, galleria that connects the two buildings. So, so I think what's important here is these, this idea of the continuous space. Dubai isn't just home to innovative design, but it's also home to innovative construction techniques. Here in Dubai, there are already buildings and offices which have been printed. This innovative method is sustainable and highly important to the city's strategy going forward. The Dubai 3D printing strategy is a unique initiative. It aims to construct 25% of new builds with this technology by the year of 2030. Mr. Ahmed Al Salami, Head of Building Systems Development Unit at Dubai Municipality, will take us through the latest innovation that Dubai Municipality has worked on. First of all, the 3D printing uh, as the strategy of UAE government 2071 to be pioneer and everything. This thing is uh, when the Sheikh Mohammed, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed in 2016, he initiated about the strategy of 3D printing and uh, the target to be 25% of Dubai building to be building in 3D uh, printing. So, from that time, we are, as a government, and we are working how to create healthy environment for uh, government, for private sector, and to come with the new idea, because 3D printing as overall the world, it is a new technology. And especially when the new technology is coming, we need to create the healthy environment. We need to support with the rules and regulation. So when the first building is coming, this building is built in 17 days, but it is fixed in two days. First of thing, it will reduce cost of the building, reduce number of manpower, almost we can say 70 to 80 percent of the manpower used for to build any building. So in the future we will be saying, oh, I'm planning to print the house rather than just to build the house. Can you just reveal for us what are some of the future or upcoming projects with this technology? See, nowadays, uh, mostly for the government project, so many projects, small building, G plus building, they are working in design stage for to build it as a 3D building and government housing, Sheikh Mohammed housing program and Sheikh Zayed, Ministry of Infrastructure. And this challenge at the beginning, but what we see because of our experience in the first building of 3D building, that one, it's give us Nothing is impossible. Sure, inshallah, as Dubai will be pioneer in this technology, and we are here to support also any latest technology in the world, 3D or other new technology. Dubai is truly taking innovation to the next level. 
and it is down to the city's young spirit, eager to achieve, make change and succeed. This nature led to the city hosting the world's greatest show, Expo 2020 Dubai. We've now arrived at the Belgian pavilion designed by Asser architect and Vincent Colbu Architectura. Ideal Standard MENA is one of its official partners since the brand's HQ is located in Belgium. Titled The Green Arch, the Belgian pavilion focuses on sustainability and it also integrates technology into its design. Today, we will host here one of the most prominent figures in interior design in Asia and the Middle East, Kristina Zanic. During this world tour, we're talking a lot about innovation and technology and how does it impact also the design as well. So I would like to know how does technology and innovation impact your design process? Actually, for us, it's really important. We always try to be creative, always trying to create something bespoke, which is mm -hmm. what our clients are seeking. And I think technology today is actually making our work a little bit faster. So, I mean, less time to think, more time uh, exploring different software, different programs, we're really experimenting the way we present our work mm. as well. So technology and um, just the way we actually approaching that in terms of the way our company is uh, interacting with clients, BIM programs are becoming more and more prevalent in terms of the way designers actually interact with both clients and architects. So yeah, technology is really becoming a key factor for us. And when we talk about the journey, obviously you were one of the co-founders of uh, DWP, now you're CEO of Christina Zanich Consultants. How, what was the evolution, design evolution of your work? Has your design philosophy changed? Well, my design philosophy hasn't changed, but I think uh, we still try to be innovative. I think we still use our intuition on a lot of things, but at the end of the day, it's perseverance. To be able to go through a journey in your life time uh, to be able to do design. I think persevering and just keeping up and always looking at what are the latest trends, how can we innovate, how can we join together with suppliers to create new, uh, new ideas for different things. So yeah, I think the journey has been long, but it's been really uh, very fruitful and uh, very rewarding. Can we predict what's ahead of us in the next 50 years? But I think there's going to be some technology innovations that's going to be a lot more inherent in our business. 3D printing, uh, sustainability, hopefully we can get back to a bit more human approach, balance technology mm -hmm. with that human side. So these are sort of some of my predictions, but maybe not in my lifetime. <laughs> Expo 2020 Dubai and the city itself is bursting with innovative solutions just as Ideal Standard strives to develop applications and products that not only advance design and functionality but also support the brand's sustainability mission. Roberto, welcome back. Marhaba Marina, it's my first uh, Arabic lesson. I'm so proud to learn a word in Arabic <laughs> here in Dubai. We'll teach you some more later, but today we're here at the Belgian Pavilion. This pavilion focuses on innovation and sustainability. So what can you tell me more about how does that drive the ideal standard and the products that you've been designing lately? Ideal standards have been always focused on innovation because innovation is the, is the future of our life. Innovation is to look two step ahead in what will be the new generation of product and new generation of needs. So, uh, as Ideal Standard, we have always been very much focused innovating not only function, but also materials, but also new ways of using our tools and so on. So we are very much uh, uh, focused on this. One example is the IntelliMix. It's we just installed here, right? That is installed mm -hmm. in this, uh, okay. in this uh, pavilion and uh, is fully dedicated to the public use and is a, a very, uh, I can say, elegant uh, um, um, faucet that is mixing together water and soap. It's important because if you think how many times in a public bathroom we touch uh, a soap uh, holder or, 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 or a faucet and so on, we have everything that is fully touchless. And in this same, uh, same uh, faucet you can have these two elements, water and soap together, it's fully, fully, fully useful for, for the public use, but we are thinking that it can be also in the future 
helpful for also for the private use. And when we talk about the different sustainability and different initiatives, what can you tell me about some of the projects that Ideal Standard supports globally but as well as in the region? We are very, very uh, involved in sustainability with many initiatives all around the world. But uh, here in the region, I'm happy to uh, sponsor uh, a, a world challenge that is named Solar Decathlon. Mm -hmm. That is a challenge between universities all over the world. And uh, we are supporting two teams mm -hmm. that are creating the ideal uh, house of the future uh, with, uh, with solar energy and uh, Tawazun and uh, um, uh, Desert Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Shukran Marina, so it's my second lesson. Another on word. <laughs>
on a journey to five iconic cities, unveiling new trends and products in a truly new and innovative way. Many partners tuned in and joined us on our tour, exceeding our expectations by far. This tour was a massive effort for us at Ideal Standard, and I want to deeply thank all my colleagues at Ideal Standard, our marketing team, the teams hosting us in five cities, our presenters, our agency, our chief designer Roberto Palomba, and especially Sonia Audino and her film crew to develop this series of events. Finally, and again on behalf of 9,000 colleagues, I would like to take the opportunity and thank you, our viewers, customers and partners, for tuning in once again and joining us on this fifth event in the Together World Tour. There's more to come next year, and I would like to invite you to continue the journey with us and to discover all that Ideal Standard has to offer. Until then, stay well, and I hope to see you again in 2022.